Hey everyone, how's everybody doing? So today we are going to look at the end-to-end -end workflow after you have finished a painting. So this is a painting that I've finished and it's almost ready to be archived or put it back into storage. So we're going to look into how to get the tape off, which is my favorite part. The next part will be, uh, as you can see, the paper is all buckled up. So how to flatten it out and then how do I scan it and then how do I adjust the colors on the computer and then how do I finally archive the original painting and what do I do with the scanned copies. So we're going to cover all of this topic that completes the entire workflow for a painting for every single painting that I've done in the last three, four years. So let's get started. So starting with the tape off. As you can see, most of my tapes, uh, it came off uh, with this, this one remaining. So you need to pull the tape outwards to avoid peeling the paper. So this way we get the tape off and there you go. You have the nice crisp white border. That's my favorite. Now the paper, as you can see, it's all buckled up. You can see the shadows, how it's buckled up. Okay, we're gonna fix that right away. It's a very easy and cheap solution. So the first thing is, put it upside down, make sure the surface is clean. It's not wet, okay? All right, next, get a tissue. A kitchen towel is fine. Fold it in half, make it one fourth and one more nice thick bunch and then get a mystifier or you can do this with a brush so you need to soak the back of this paper completely so that the entire paper is wet evenly and then the whole thing will buckle up again but into one single uh, buckle and that we flatten out and then it becomes straight okay so either you can take a big flat brush like this one dip it and wet the paper but i like using a mystifier it's super easy and convenient so let's get started so here we go make sure every corner and everywhere the water is there don't put too much water it'll drip and might go under the painting and spoil it so be careful and you can immediately start just taking off the excess water just leave it a little bit moist and done it's almost done that's all one gentle wipe now as you can see the whole paper has started buckling up again but it's like one big round buckle now now we're gonna take it and place it under the books so that uh, it can straighten out so i gotta move the camera at this point to show you how i do it so here it is and i put it here and this is the cover of the back cover of the arch gold break cold press uh paper 9 by 12 so i put it like this and i put it like this so that it's completely covered. I basically store the front and back cover of the arches uh, cold press paper for this purpose because sometimes they get dirty so I can replace them. And now what I do is I take a big bunch of books and I place it on top and leave it like this for a couple of hours. So after a couple of hours, I come back and check it's perfectly straight and it's ready for the next process which is scanning it and let's wait for two hours and then we are going to scan it on that beast all right all right so it's already evening and it's been more than two hours so let's see how the painting looks like right now and i got my setup up and running so that I can actually scan and show the entire archival process. That's my art studio and that's my workplace and that's the scanner that we're going to use to scan the painting. 
All right, let's move the box and let's see how it looks like. All right. I have not looked at this painting uh, before this video, so let's see how it looks like. From here, as you can see, the paper is completely flat. I'm gonna go like this, you can see. There are no creases or no buckling. Okay, so let's turn it around. And as you can see, it looks perfect. There you go. All right, so with this uh, being totally successful, you can see there's no buckling here. I'm showing you that from the edge, All right? It's super flat. So the reason why we need to do this, it, it wouldn't look good in, inside your frame if it's buckled. And the second thing is it won't scan properly uh, if, uh, you know what, uh, the, if the buckling is not gone so let's go and try to scan it right now so first of all like this is a scanner that we're going to use this is the epson um, xl 10,000, i believe and let me mention that you can find everything on ebay so this is a cover that is made specially for this particular scanner it has uh, it has a large bed for scanning and it's perfect for artwork scanning so this company is called digital deck covers and i have bought many scanner covers from them so let me pull it out and this is the beautiful scanner and here's the model number epson expression 10,000 xl it's amazing as you can see it has a huge bed and this is a 9 by 12 painting so i'm gonna put it here like this align the edges and let's close it and as you can see i can still put another 9 by 12 on the side so it's huge so it's perfect for quarter sheep or close to half sheep but it's great so and my computer is up and running so i'm gonna start the scanning software it's called epson scan and it's free and your scanner have to be running in order to open the software on the computer so let me start it and see you on the computer all right uh we are back on the computer so here's the icon for epson scan and let's open it all right so that's the previous painting uh that i scanned so it Kind of retains the preview unless you close this window i don't so i can still see the previous scan uh, image so here you need to uh, select the document tab as reflective document source document table uh, auto exposure type is photo and i scan them in 24 bit and like i mentioned this is an amazing scanner you can see the resolution you can go with it's like mind blowing of course at 24 or 3200 uh, uh, resolution dpi uh, the file size is going to be insanely large and you won't it, it'll be difficult to manage so it's important to strike a balance between the resolution and what you can store and what actual purpose it's going to be used for so i'm right now scanning uh, at 1200 uh, DPI and uh, 1200 DPI scan is going to take somewhere like 15 minutes for a 9 by 12 image but for the sake of this uh, demonstration I'll just do uh, let's say 200 DPI scan okay and let's go and hit the preview button as you can see the preview scan has started it takes like maybe 10 seconds and you should have a preview image here. Now, if you didn't put the image properly on the scan bed and you will see the image is misaligned and you can go and fix it. So this, I think it's pretty much well aligned. So I'm gonna select the area. If I, if I scan without selecting the area, it's gonna scan the entire bed. So my scan time will be double of what it will be. So I'm going to scan, select the area that I want to scan so that we are more efficient. 
All right, so this is the area that gets scanned. And now if you look at the picture, so the, here are some quick settings that you can do. Uh, the histogram looks pretty much perfect, the lights and darks, and here's the output. I would say it looks very close to the way I painted it. I'm gonna take a second look at it in Photoshop uh, once we are done with the scanning, okay? So, but if you want, like you can always, uh, you know, adjust these values and it can make it lighter, darker and do all the adjustments. So I close it and you can manage your saturation, curves and everything, sharpening. You can do all this stuff. The more options you select here, the scan process is going to be longer. So I keep it simple. I just try to match the color and brightness of the image and the values. I didn't mean brightness, I meant the values. As long as the values look more or less accurate, I go with that. I don't use um, any of these other options. Dust removal is a very painful, slow process. Backlight correction, I don't use it. Not color restoration, nothing. I just use the unsharp mask and I adjust the um, you know, black and white here. Okay, so that's it. And let's go and scan it. So I scan it in TIFF format and it automatically increments the number. So let's say it should take maybe three minutes or something, I guess. Oh, it's less than a minute. It's only 200 DPI. And we are almost done. All right. So this image is scanned. So it by default comes to your pictures folder and it's a TIFF image. I do have Photoshop open. So let's open it up in Photoshop and see what we can do here. These are all the previous images that I had scanned. So they're all in my Photoshop. So what we do is rotate the image, uh, image rotation, 90 degrees counterclockwise. And just in case, if your image is slightly slanted and not exactly horizontal and alignment is not correct, you can always do image rotation arbitrary and you can give how many angles you want to uh, move in which direction. So I have done it in the past, so the value is still there. Sometimes you make a mistake and you don't want to scan again, and you can just adjust the angle here and then crop it again, provided you have enough border space around the image. But this looks good to me. I see the border is good on top and this side, and almost on this side, but bottom there's a little bit extra, so I'm just gonna crop it somewhere here, image, crop, okay. I don't feel the need to change anything here at this point. Everything looks pretty close to how I painted it. But if you had to do anything, you could just go and make all the adjustments here, like whatever you want to do. I wouldn't go into details of photo editing in this one, but just wanted to show you. Usually I just crop, and align and make sure the image uh, values, color values matches my original painting. I usually have the original painting in my hand when I'm doing this. And so I just save the TIFF image, uh, let's say control S. And what I do is for internet publishing purpose, I just do a resize of the image. I go here, I give it a height of say 700 usually. And it resamples the entire image and reduces the size. And this is what I, and then I put my watermark here if I want to. And then I do a save a copy. And I save this one, not as a TIFF, but as a JPEG. So we'll leave it here, done. Okay, close now, and we're good. All right, so this is the one. And this is the JPEG image that we saw. Uh, like I said, the scanner is brilliant. If you buy the scanner or if you have the scanner, you're gonna love it. It picks up the texture of the cold press paper so well, you have to see it in person. I had some of the drawing go outside, which I erased the scanner picked that up as well. So I'm not endorsing the scanner. The scanner was not given to me free by Epson, but these are my gadgets that I use and I love them.
And this is the reason why I love them. It captures everything. So now the next thing I do is I upload both of this into my Google Drive and they get archived there. And this is where the digital journey ends here. And next, I archive these into archival folders. I will cover that in the next part of the video. All right, so let me shut it down and I will see you on my art desk. All right, we are back at the art desk. And so this is what I use for archiving. So these are like the presentation books from Blick. And this is a nine by 12. It takes 24 paintings and it's not, it's, it's pretty nice and fits perfectly and does the job. So these are all archival uh, sheets inside. So for instance, like I have some of my paintings stored on this one. This is a new book that I started a few days back. As you can see, all my previous ones are here. I did cover some of these in my demos. And the new one finds a home here. All right. And this is where my workflow ends. And it goes to my drawer and stays there until somebody wants to buy it or I have to do something with it, with the original. And that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions or if you want to know anything more about the process in detail, just leave a comment and let me know what you'd like to hear more about and I can cover that topic. But this is pretty much the workflow I follow. And so far it has worked great for me. It's efficient, it's not expensive. And so there are good returns for this investment. Like I think these folders, they cost less than $10. As for the scanner, I believe the brand new one costs thousands of dollars, but I was lucky to get that for $250 from somebody who bought it long time ago, but never used it. And so he sold it on uh, Craigslist. I picked it up and everything turned out great. So I will definitely recommend that scanner. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Thank you for watching and let me know if you would like to like me to cover any other topic or like to see anything else. All right. Thank you. Happy painting.